competitive games are some of the most engaging and replayable kinds of games out there. I would say some of them would run on the player's desire to outsmart their opponent. These games can range from tactical shooters, fighters, time trials, and much more. A lot of these games can typically be enjoyed with friends or can be tournament worthy where high skill opponents all meet together. What makes fighting games great are the communities that build up over time and meeting new people within those communities. But as fun as fighting games are, there is one fighting game I haven't really heard anyone talk about. Maiden in Spells is a one-on-one -on -one magical girl aerial project battler. If that string of words confuses you, it confuses me too. Um, <laughs> the best way I could describe it is that it's basically a 1v1 competitive bullet hell where you and your opponent are pretty much the bosses of the game. You get to throw a barrage of different attacks at your opponent and your opponent can do the same to you. And even though it may seem like a chaotic concept, it is a competitive game, so there is some kind of balance and strategy just to keep the gameplay fair and fairly skill based as well. Because in essence, what the game really comes down to is skill, strategy, and mainly endurance. Almost forgot to mention the basics of the game. In simple terms, hit your opponent, they lose a life. You have four lives in total up in their respective corners of the screen. Lose all four of your lives, you lose a stock, or pretty much this tarot card symbol. Pick all your opponent's tarot cards and you win. Easy enough, right? And I must also ask you consider cute girls. <laughs> How Made in Spell keeps itself balanced is its different types of moves, being basic, wide, offensive, and defensive. I'd say the concept is fairly simple for the four different attack types and how it works. Basic is the attack that you're going to constantly be using, and it's always going to go towards your opponent. I say aim towards your opponent because when it comes to your wide attack, your wide attack is a bigger and more long range attack, but it will not hit your opponents, which is why you gotta keep your opponents on the move so they may accidentally run into it. Now your offensive attack is really good for trying to push and corner your opponent. Now your defensive move may try to push your opponent away or it may try to mitigate any damage that the opponent throws at you. Aside from that, picking up the game is actually really easy. You can either use controller or keyboard, preferably controller, just to be able to move diagonally more easily. And the game has a really simple and comprehensive tutorial to teach you how to play the game. The only weird thing about the game is finding the tutorial, which is hidden under the extras tab, which I'm not even sure why it's there. But if you'd like a better understanding of your attacks and movements, I'd recommend trying out the tutorial. In regards to your character's moveset, you can always read about them on a character select screen in training mode if you'd like, and give them a shot. From there, you can immediately go into multiplayer in the network tab and find some lobbies. Some of them occasionally pop up throughout the day, and sometimes when there isn't any lobbies, you can always go to the linked official Discord from the lobbies menu. From what I've seen, other players in the lobbies and in Discord are pretty friendly, and are very much willing to tell you more about a character and how their move kit and playstyle works. For example, the other day I learned how the Sun Priestess worked from a conversation at a lobby. I was not a part of the conversation, but I but I but I looked at it. I was I was on on it, and from there I figured out how well she is able to put pressure on opponents, which made me love her playstyle even more now, and how much my friend learned how disgusting she is. <laughs> yeah, I can see that you really have to keep your distance, so it's like I have to be on your face to actually get you. Yeah, you're so fucking aggressive. You figure yeah, this out I so have, fast. Yeah. You figure this out way like too right. fast. I realize no. I have to be right in your face for that. So if you want like some more effective guides on how to play a character, I can't really recommend YouTube as a guide because there isn't really any tutorials on any characters except Lich of Flowers. The video is made by TNZ Gaming and the video goes really in depth on how to play her both offensively and defensively and some new term that I've never heard called Reverse Lich. It's really good, I recommend it. <laughs> but if you want more tips for other characters, I'd recommend checking out the Discord. And they're like super helpful and willing to teach new players about how to play the game.
Skill and strategy is not the only key thing you need to focus on. One of the main traits I'd recommend working on would be your endurance to dodge things being thrown at you. Sure, some characters have specials that can block them and mitigate most incoming attacks or, you know, invincibility frames. But that can only help you for so long. The one thing if you want to do some stuff solo and maybe unlock some stages would be to give the story mode a shot. Now depending on how you want to play, you can choose from four different game modes. You got cute, normal, hard, and very hard. Cute is a very chill mode if you're new to bullet hells. Editor's note, it is not easy. You have infinite lives and health, but there's still a lot of bullets. So have fun with that. <laughs> Anyways, back onto the script. I'd say for getting better at going against other players to try out hard mode to better process the attacks as well as from the movement attacks since story mode functions kind of like an arcade mode where you fight against other characters from the roster, but with a little extra added to their utility. And I am talking about their Magnus attacks, which is essentially a character's ultimate during story mode, where they throw a barrage of bullets at you until you deplete their health to zero. <laughs> it is very chaotic. I am still on the final level. The final level is hard. It has been five days since I made it to the final level. <laughs> hey there, a lot of editor's notes in this video, and that's because I delayed making this video by three months. I was supposed to finish this last December, and by the time I started working on this again, a new game called Duelist of Eden came out. The only reason why I mention it is that we got a Maiden in Spells Rep. We got Dreadworm. Let's go! I'm surprised that this niche of a game, less than like a thousand reviews on Steam, is collabing with another game. And I think that's really cool. Not to forget the composer of Maiden and Spell is the same composer for Duelist of Eden. But yeah, Hellabomb soundtrack would highly recommend, you know, checking out one of those games. Very fun. And aside from that, Dreadword means rise up. Let's go! Alright, now back to the video. I, I almost forgot to mention, this is, this is a competitive game, so, uh, yeah, the tournaments, dude, the tournament seat is wild, seeing these top players go head to head and seeing, like, the overwhelming, like, difference in their playstyles compared to my rookie understanding of characters from, you know, their fluid movements of weaving through each gap like it's nothing, like, oh, it's smooth. Here we have a more recent tournament within the year, being a long continuing series called Awakening the Maiden, where they're on their 73rd adventure, or tournament, uh, called the Thief of Frost. These players are absolutely insane, constantly pushing their opponent with aggression, and cornering them towards the ever-closing wall. There is never a dull moment within these tournaments as, once the match starts, the bullets fly. Once these bullets start flying, it's just a chaotic mess to where, I mean, I don't even know what I'm looking at in any of, this, in any of these situations. I mean. Look at this guy, how- what? What are, you, what are you supposed to do here? It's crazy. Not to forget, there was also other tournaments, such as the Frostbite Maiden that took place last summer 2023, which I learned of different players that are just cracked. For example, there is this player named Andrew, who is known to be a Storm Beast main. In this tournament, he's playing Lich and made it to Winner's Finals. The day before this tournament, he just learned Lich. Putting it outward? Yeah. So, so Saya, like, be aggressive. Yeah, Saya is asking in the chat that I said no lich. This is true. This is a basically like a day one lich. So this player here, Andrew, was a storm player up until yesterday. He switched to lich and <laughs> went from being the last seed to the three seed because his results improved so much. That's what lich does to you. <laughs> yeah, he, he basically switched to lich yesterday. So when I said it, it was accurate. But we now have a lich player and he's in uh, winners finals. <laughs> this dude, this guy. This guy's cracked. This guy knew these players are cracked. I want to be cracked. Okay, I'm done. Okay, I'm, I'm done stroking my ego. Anyways, but yo, I want to be cracked, and I believe you too can become cracked because holy hell, this game is so much fun. But in reality, it's kind of just a really simple kind of game where it only has four different buttons to attack, no button combos to be considered a fighting game, but it can sure as hell feel like a fighting game when the opponent is starting to put pressure on you and backing you into a corner. If you got a few bucks on Steam, love Magical Girls, 
and or maybe you want to try a new 1v1 fighting game, I say give this a shot. Traditional competitiveness through first person shooter games or the simple 2D combo fighters aren't that bad, but, but those odd unique concepts definitely deserve a little bit more spotlight and I just wanted to show you what this was about. Before I end off the video, I would recommend keeping an eye out on the creator Minodev. Though this game came out back in 2020, they're still active creating another new bullet hell game coming out supposedly soon called uh, Rabbit and Steel. Similar kind of game, but you're working together with friends to fight boss enemies. Really cool creator, would go and give him a follow. Speaking of which, uh, when does that game come out? Ah, oh, shit. Hey, thanks for watching. This video took me a bit longer than I thought it would, but hey, we made it. Now that I got this out there, I'll be making more videos from here on out. I love sharing interests, absolutely love video games. Uh, if you like the channel, um, subscribe, I don't know, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Alright, peace.